Hello everyone and thank you for joining us for today's tech tip. I wanted to give you an idea of how to use Google Draw and Google Slides to help students create flow charts or concept maps. Um, and this process could be used in order to do a food web or a timeline or anything in which they're going to take and manipulate some type of text box with some pictures and see a workflow. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have my assignment up here. Uh, and the assignment that I gave to students was to see what happens with motor and sensory neurons and association neurons when they spot a huge cockroach. What would the reaction be? So I want them to take these words here that I gave them and I want them to move them around into a position and basically tell a story on their Google Draw or on their Google or on their slideshow of what happens and what the workflow of the body is as it gets to the reaction. So what I'm going to do is I have them, I gave them seven different words and I want them to have pictures from Google. So I'm going to go to my Google Drive and I'm going to, I'll hit Google Drive and I'll just do a new drawing. I'm going to go to more and I'll see drawings. Now that I have this drawing up, I'm just going to create text boxes that the students can move around. You can have the students make their own text boxes or you can give some to them at the beginning. I find that it's easier from the first time you do this to give them some text boxes and allow them to move through that process on their own. Okay, I have one already created here, one that I've already started. So here are the words that I wanted them to put in, but it is missing the brain and the central nervous system. Now I can copy and paste this, but since I didn't do that originally, I want the format to look exactly the same. So all I'm going to do is put a text box. I'm going to add it and I'm going to put brain and central nervous system. So now they have the ability to move these around however they want, okay? However, whatever way that they see fit. Now, what I wanted them to do when I asked the students to was to find a picture of that particular thing on uh, Google and bring it in. So they're going to quite simply just click here and they're going to look up a cockroach. Okay, it's one of the things that I asked them to find. They're going to go to images and they're going to find the one that they want. Okay, I want this one. Okay, that's the best picture or what I think uh, of a cockroach, which I don't know if there are good pictures. And they're just going to take it to that tab and drop it. Now, here's that image. So, what I would do is I'd put this image of the cockroach here. Okay, and I would take my cockroach text box here. Okay. And now I have this. Maybe I want to start with the eye. Okay. The eye, I see it first. So I'm going to take the eye and I'm going to put it here. Again, I'll go back here and I'll type in eye. And I'll find an image of the eye. Go to images. Here's an image of an eye. Okay. I can choose whichever one I want. I go back to my drawing. It's going to pop open and I'm going to drop it. Okay, now I'll just manipulate this, move this over a little bit, and now I can begin putting together my flow chart. Now I ask my students to put connectors and arrows that go along with them to show how they connect, first of all, so they have to have some words between the connectors, and also to show the, the way that the body is working in this situation. So what I would have them do is they're gonna go up here to the top, they're going to add an arrow. Okay, here's an arrow here. So I see the cockroach, right? And then I'm going to describe what happens during this process. So I would put a text box, I'd add one here, I'd have the students add a text box with their explanation about why there's an arrow here. So the eye uh, sees the cockroach, right? And then we'll get more technical as we move along into the motor neurons and sensory neurons. This is an easy way to use Google Draw for students to manipulate content. Uh, you could make it very simple, you could make it very advanced just depending on what your needs are.
there is an alternative to using Google Draw in order to make a flow chart or a food web or a concept map. Uh, the idea of using the arrows and the pictures and the words to create this flow chart can also be used in Google Slides. So the first thing I'm going to do if I want to use this is I'm going to go to my drive and I'm going to hit new and I'm going to hit slides. Now that I have a new Google slide coming up, I'm going to name it. And for me, this is 221. And I'm going to go in here and just get rid of the text boxes. I do not want these. So I'm going to get rid of them. And that allows me a blank slate. Now, just like in Google Draw, I'm going to insert text box and allow for uh, students to manipulate them and move them around. So I'm going to go up to the top and choose text box. And I'm going to draw a text box. Now, this time I'm going to draw it outside of the actual slide so that they can move it onto the slide as they get used to it. So I'm going to type in motor neuron. I also want them to have on their flow chart sensory neurons. I can extend this out. I want them to have the eye. They're going to click here. Don't be afraid if it gets too large there. We can always bring it down in size. And they're going to go down the list that I gave them on their document and add all seven of these to their Google slide. So now that I have all of the terms that I want on this slide, I'm going to have the students just use this document to move things around, manipulate it to make a flow chart or a concept map. So now the first thing they may use is the eye. So the eye saw the cockroach. So maybe they put the eye here. They're going to go to Google and they're going to search cockroach or whatever picture they're looking for. Sorry, the eye. So in order for them to do that, they're going to put an eye and it's going to come up with a list and they're going to go to images. And just like they did on Google Draw, they're going to find the image that they want. And once they do, they're going to drag that image. It's going to open up Google Slides and they're going to drop it in. And they can resize it if it's too large. They can move it around in order to make this flow chart work on this slide. So I'm going to put this in here. Maybe I want to move the eye term a little bit closer, kind of center it a little bit. And then I want to put in the cockroach because the eye saw the cockroach. I'm going to go over to my search and I'm going to put in cockroach. And I'm going to find the best picture of the cockroach I could find. I used this one last time. I'm going to use it here and I'm going to resize it. So now they're taking it from off screen onto the slide itself. They're going to manipulate it, move it to where they want, and they need to make a connection. So I'm going to use an arrow. Okay, so now we see that the eye is attached to the cockroach, but how is it attached? That's for them. They're going to go to this text box and they're going to create one here and they can type in there exactly how they see the eye and the cockroach connecting. And as they move through this flow chart, they would add text boxes. You can have those text boxes and match them up. You could have a vocabulary list on here that they match up or pictures if you're doing foreign language, or maybe you want to use this as an ecosystem where you're gonna show a food web. Good way of doing this, pretty interactive. Now for me on my next thing is I want the students to create a paragraph explaining exactly what's happening uh, during this process. So kind of have a visual with a paragraph explaining the step-by-step -step process. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go to slide and put insert and I'm going to type in paragraph. And down here below, students are going to put in their paragraph. You can manipulate this if you don't want it to be white. You could go to backgrounds. You can change colors. You could do a theme. Anything you want to do, you can, you can adapt it. Students can adapt it as well. Thank you for watching this tech tip and we will see you soon for another tech tip.